hey, 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 how we doing, my friends? My math buddies, you decided to join me. Yeah. <laughs> it is time, my friends, to start a new math video. That's right. Welcome aboard. We are looking at lesson 3.9, and our topic of the day is subtract decimals. Woohoo! Yeah! Our essential question, our focus, and what this lesson is all about, my friends. Yes, it's about how can place value help you subtract decimals? It's a good question. How can place value help me? And we are going to look at that once we unlock the problem. That's right, friends. Real world, my friends. Real world problem. Let's take a closer look. This is Hannah has three and thirty-six hundredths kilograms of apples and two and twenty-eighth kilograms of oranges. Hannah estimates she has about one more kilogram of apples than oranges. How many more kilograms of apples than oranges does Hannah have? How can you use this estimate to decide if your answer is reasonable? It says that what operation will you use to solve the problem? Well, there's some key words in the problem. If you notice, it says, when you ask the question, how many more kilograms of apples and then oranges does Hannah have? That question, especially that have how many more, lets us know we are subtracting. That's right. Just like the word combined had to do with addition, this problem has to do with subtraction. So, yes. Now, it says circle Hannah's estimate to check that your answer is reasonable. And her estimate is that she's saying that there's one more kilogram of apples than there are oranges. Let's see how that works out. Sometimes I ask myself, why do we start in the hundreds place? You know, if we're subtracting a number and it goes to, why do we start way to the right? It's the process we take, right? Well, we always begin at the least or rightmost place of the place value numbers. It makes it easier for us as we move left. Otherwise, if we start to the left and go to the right, then we end up having to regroup and see, and it forces us back over again. So that's why we always start at the, the right. So subtract the hundreds first. If there are not enough hundreds, regroup one tenth as ten hundreds. And by looking at the hundreds place, I can see since there's an eight in the hundreds place and two and twenty eight hundreds, and there's a six in three and thirty six hundreds, I'm going to need to regroup. So that means sixteen hundreds minus eight hundredths is equal to eight hundredths, as I showed here in this problem. It says then subtract the tenths and ones, regroup as necessary. Well, fortunately here, this is going to have eight hundredths here. Two minus two, two take away two, that works to zero, no problem. So two tenths. Now the decimal point, bring it on down. And then three minus two is one. So we have here, three ones minus two ones equals one. Kind of weird, I'm going back and forth. I'm going, whoo, my head goes spinning. Back and forth, back and forth. Dun, 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 dun. Record the difference for each place value. Okay, we did do that. Now draw a quick picture to check your work. Well, let me put the problem here. We have three and 36 hundreds minus two and 28 hundreds. Okay, first thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and model the three and 36 hundreds. So here's my three holes. Now I need three tens. Uno, dos, tres. Okay, and then I need six ones. As we started off, just like the problem up above, I'm going to take eight hundredths away from six hundredths. Well, I can't take eight hundredths away from those six. So yes, I do. I need to regroup. Okay, you see I regrouped. I took my one tenth right there, and I converted those ten hundredths from that one tenth. That's how I got my ten hundredths over here. Now I can go ahead and subtract eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Goodbye. And of course that leaves two, four, six, eight hundredths. Now I need to take away two tenths. Oh, that's possible because I had three. I only have two left, but I can take away one Two. Oh, now there's no more any tenths left. Is there zero? Oh, no. Oh, but it's okay because we still have some whole numbers over here. Now we are taking away two holes, so I'm going to have to circle around those. Am I going to regroup? No, but I can show that I'm going to take two away. Now I only have one hole left. 
as you can see right here. And decimal place. And I don't have any tenths. I have to put that zero in there, though. Do need to put it in there. I have zero tenths because I do have some hundreds, and there's eight hundreds. And yes, since one and eight hundreds is close to one, the answer is reasonable that Hannah came up with. Yes, when she said one more kilogram of, of, of apples than oranges. So yes, we concur. Yeah. And then mathematical practice over here, it says explain how you know when to regroup in a decimal subtraction problem. This kind of comes up a lot because of the addition too. But yeah, you know, we, need, we, need, we know we need to regroup in a decimal subtraction problem when um, you don't have enough like hundreds or enough tenths to subtract from. We did not have enough hundreds here so that we could take eight away. You can't take eight away from six. That forced us into having to regroup one of the tenths, which is 10 times greater than the hundredths place. So we were able to take that one tenth and convert it into 10 hundredths. Then we ended up with 16 hundredths. Then we could subtract. That's that mathematical practice there. Okay, page master. Try this, use addition to check. Ooh. Since subtraction and addition are inverse operations, you can check subtraction by adding. Okay, an inverse operation is just inverse is almost like doing the opposite of what's being done. Step one, find the difference, subtract the hundreds first, and then subtract the tenths, ones, and tens, regroup as necessary. Okay, well, first thing I'm going to do is to make that an equivalent decimal. Well, yeah, I like doing that. Put in a zero right there. Yeah. And with my decimal, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, bring it on down. Bring it on down. There you go. Now, I'm ready to start. Because I have a three here, and three can't, ooh, can't take anything from nothing. Three, take away from nothing? Not possible. Got to move next door. Get some help. Ooh, but he's actually under attack. Oh, my goodness, the six. Yeah, the six is trying to take six from the two. He doesn't have any. He's under attack, too. Sorry, we got to keep moving on. Ooh, move over here all the way to the hole, the ones column. But look, at he's under attack, too. Oh, my God, the whole number up here. They're going after him. That means we have to go all the way to the tens place to get some help. And he's happy to loan one of his ten, the only ten he has, to his buddy, the ones column. He gives him that 10. That's why we put that little one there, showing that now we have 14 ones. But we're not done yet. He needs to loan because all oh, everybody's needing some help. So he's going to loan one of his ones, one of his whole numbers. He's going to loan one of them. He's going to bring that over. He's going to give that and convert one of those whole numbers into 10 tenths. That gives him 12 now. But he needs to loan one of his tenths, right? So that means he's going to go down to 11, and he's going to give one of those tenths to the hundreds so that this guy at least has some. Now he has 10 hundreds. Woo! That was a mouthful. Now we have 10 minus 3 is 7. We have 11 minus 6, which is 5. See, it all works out now. 13 minus 8, which is 5. And of course, there is no whole part now. And there's our answer. 5 and 57 hundreds. But step two says, wait, ho, 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 hey, 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 <laughs> check your answer. Okay, so I'm going to add the difference to the number you subtracted. If the sum matches the number you subtracted from, your answer is correct. Yes, that's what I want. Yeah, I want it to be correct. Okay, Mr. Wara, calm down. It'll work out. Okay, the difference was five. And 5,700, so I need to write that in there because it says that's the difference. The difference is going to get added to the number that was being subtracted, the number subtracted, which was 8 and 6,300. And we'll see if it gets us back to where we were. Now, the decimal first, first thing is bring it on down. Okay, so I did that. So now I'm adding. There's my 10, carry the 1. That's 11, that's 12, that's a 2. Ooh, he's a little 2, though. Carry the 1, 13, and we get 14. 14 and 20 hundreds, is that correct? Yeah. It is. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Okay, now we're coming down to. Ooh, oh, there's an alligator. Oh my goodness, you kind of scared me. You startled me. Oh, where'd you come from? Oh my goodness, alligator. What are you doing here? Oh, look, you know what? I think he's sleeping. Yes, I think he's sleeping. You know what? Maybe I can kind of nudge him and he'll just kind of swim on out, out of here. Let me see. Oh, I accidentally deleted him off the screen. Oh, sorry. He was, well, he did exist. Now he doesn't exist. <laughs> anyway, 
Sorry, buddy. Well, you know what? We were just a little nervous. Didn't want you eating our math page, you know? That wouldn't be good. And if you eat that, you might eat the video. Who knows? Anyway, now mathematical practice one here we're going to look at. It says evaluate. It says, is your answer correct? Explain. Yes. Well, we already know we checked it. It's like, yes, our answer is correct. Um, because, we have to explain, because the difference added to the number I subtracted up there in that model is equal to the number I subtracted from. So let's go ahead and put those notes down. All righty then. Moving on. Bring it on down. Here we go. Ooh, it's the old Sharon show. So what I'm going to do for this section, since we've done some of this already, I'm going to work through the problems more quickly. You can put the video on pause and go from there. I will explain my thinking, but at a faster pace. Okay, so I do an estimate. I see six. I see two. I see six minus two. That's four. Okay, time to do my work. I can see that I need to regroup here. But the eight's larger than the three, so I'm going to go ahead and grab one from this guy. Decimal, bring it on down. Now I have five, and then I have six. And five minus two is three. Is three and 6,500 pretty close to four? It is. Close enough for me. Estimate, here we have four. Here we have about two. Four minus two? Two. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and bring it on down, the old decimal. See an issue here. Regroup, regroup. I need to go all the way to the four. I'm going to give that a three. Bring one over. That's going to be 13 and then one. Notice this is just like primary. It's just the numbers or decimals. That's all. The, that's the only difference, really. And then we have a two here. So I have two and 59 hundredths. Okay. I have four. Looks like two. Same thing. Two. Decimal. Bring it on down. Problem, problem, problem. <laughs> so I've come away over here. That 10 is going to turn to a nine because he needs one, two, which is eight. Nine minus two, seven. And three minus two. One, one and seven eight hundredths. Here, oh, just find the difference. Oh, and check your answer. Okay, yes, number four worked out. Yes, I like number five too. How about number six? Okay, well, I hope those all worked out for you there. It is time to say goodbye. Later, dude. I mean, yeah. Is there stuff? No, we have to say hasta la vista. My friends, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor, but it's time to go. Now live long and prosper.